अंदर की नमस्कार प्रस्तुत लेटेस्ट टेक्नजी वीएफएक्स ऐसी चाल इंपारटेंट रोल प्ले चुनाव वीटल की हय्यस्ट बजेट प्रेक्षक इलांट यानी मूवी चूडा की इष्टपड़न इलांट ऐसी वीएफएक्स संबंधी इंडिया टाप मोस्ट कंपनी अलागे आंध्र प्रदेश में नंबर वन कंपनी सिंबिस् टेक्नजी अधने ओ नरेश कुमार गार मन मुझे वारे अड़ी तेस असल ऐनी कंपनी एपू स्टार्ट अलागे कैरियर अवकाश क्रियेटो विशाखपन अनेक नरेश गार नमस्ते अंबिस् टेक्नजी असल एपड़ू स्थापित बड़ी दिन कोई विवरा चार सी सिंबिस् टेक्नजी इनीषि स्टार्ट इन सिरपुर अबउट एन इयर्स बैक लेटर आईडेड टू स्मा स्पेस एंड वि गवर्नमेंट आफ आंध्र प्रदेश वाटे टू अलाट लैंड For IT companies in Vizag, we were the first company to start operations in the Ishkund IT SCZ. They allotted about two acres of land, so we built a one lakh square foot office here. It, initially, at that point in time, it I think it was spent about twenty twenty five crores constructing this facility. When we constructed this facility, there was no road to the hill, no bus facility, no transport facility, no food facility for the employees. So we had to struggle a lot. You know, we had to meet the district collector to get the road done. We got the approach roads done. There was no power facility. Also, we had to get a substation sanction, and uh, eventually it took two years from the time of allotment to get everything in place, like to have the approach roads in place, to have the power connections in place, to have internet connections in place. Even till date, I don't think there are many food points, food courts, except maybe recently they've opened up. So it was a struggle for the employees to have food here, to come to the office here. At one point in time, we purchased about 300 vehicles, uh, two wheelers, and about 10 cars for employees. to come to office because it was very difficult for them to come to office we had some innovative scheme where we paid the margin money and we shared the installment between the employees and us for a period of 2 to 2 and a half years so various struggles like like i told you because we are building a new ecosystem in vizag the government wanted to create itcz in this area and we had to support the government initiative and also spur the other investors and had to motivate other friends like vishnu kumar raju sankhya mahati ma'am all of them also started constructing after we built so they were also into operations so that's how the story began and then we moved here and later on the government helped a little bit with the public transport and then the bandwidth companies came in slowly bandwidth improved slowly but still there is still issues like um, transport issues there's not much public transport anybody who has a own two wheel only can come up and work in any of the uh, one after we have started i think more than 2 million sft of it spaces built in this hill 1 hill 2 and hill 3 i think half of the companies are in operation i think that way it's a good satisfaction that we were the lead company who took the initiative who took the risk i recall that even when the first installment of concrete came from lnt that's in tobro the vehicle could not go up the hill they had to go back unload the concrete half and then come back to the hill okay. because of lack of proper approach road because they played a dummy road and the vehicle couldn't come with the road on that kind of so that kind of struggle this is what you're saying today About 20 lakh square feet of IT space are built up. The government itself has built a startup village. That was also our recommendation. And then they have built a phase two. That also we were pushing it. And the last two governments, like when Rajesh Gharigar was the chief minister, when Roshan Gharigar was the chief minister, when even when Chandra Bhavan was the chief minister, and even to the present government, still their effort is we are pushing the government to build more infrastructure and to make this a play IT destination. So the it's a, it's a continuous work. It's not like what you are seeing now is. Uh, 15 years of effort on this hills okay. so i think there are good times with infosys coming in now and i expect because of the pandemic more people want to work from their home place and companies want them to work from the office space and then there is a issue of whether you want to work from your home or you want to come to office so major companies are not wanting people to work from home they want oh. them to come back to office but people have gone to the native places especially women Take the example of Infosys. I think they have 3.2 lakh employees and 40% are women. Most of them, you know, are not preferring to go back to Mumbai or Bangalore or Delhi or Hyderabad. So they, but so now Infosys has come up with a new idea where they set up tier two cities like Vizag, Coimbatore, and they set up operations in that city so that people who are resident of that area can go and work in the office with half an hour commute time. So it's a hybrid model that they can report to office for a few days a week and yes. if necessary they can also work from home but it's not an issue they will not feel out of place if their husband is here the parents are here they want to spend time especially because of pandemic the emotional bonding between families has gone up a lot so i think they are definitely would prefer to work in their home place and if they have office 
that's a great idea so if you ask me what will be the potential for me once this experiment i think infosys because it has huge cash reserves has taken the first step other companies also will follow suit wipro has a building yes that definitely they will also would like to i estimate in 3.2 lakh at least about 20 to 20000 people in infosys would be from this region so what may start up with 1000 people may go up to 2000 3000 and up to 10000 i expect other companies also to follow and uh, that is how you know it's not like you're asking for new business even for the existing business infosys has even for the existing employees they have if they relocate back to visakhapatnam that's i think if, uh, at least 40 50000 people new employment for the city people who went out of the city the brain drain who went out of visakh to us or to metros for jobs in search of jobs for the last 15 years we have 40 engineering colleges just imagine how many people are passing out every year all these people in the last 15 years have got jobs and moved out and i would think they would want to come back and work in their home places if the companies provide that opportunity now infosys has taken the lead wipro will take tcs will take cognizant so many multinational companies will take the leads so we are not thinking about expanding business and getting new even if they retain their existing business you can easily have 40 50000 it professionals senior it professionals coming and working from visag and that will be a big boost to the visag it ecosystem because for every direct employment you will have four indirect jobs so 50000 people are working you will have two lakh indirect employment the other part is freshers moving out of visakhapatnam that will also stop especially the young girls they will not have a need to go out of visag they will they will stay back in visag and this ecosystem will spur more training training um, uh, infrastructure to spring up so you will have good in training infrastructure coming in you will have see 50000 people or maybe in the next 3 4 years if they come back and work in the existing tier 2 company you will have all of them will be wanting to spend uh, in housing yes on leisure so the real estate market will pick up the housing market will differ, pick up the entertainment industry will pick up so you will have a lot of uh, financial investments also happening in and around visay visakhapatnam with and i think infosys has taken a good step and if other companies follow which i definitely think they will follow this is uh, as part of the regular operations then if you invite if the investment climate in the state improves and if state government is able to convince new companies to come and invest here and then new um, uh, new opportunities open up that's uh, if you develop a you know fintech system here or if you make this an insurance uh, capital of india last time we had this the 14 government in public sector insurance companies we wanted to house them in a million square feet all the 14 insurance companies especially during the last time we had a cyclone the hoodood cyclone where the insurance companies could not function for 2 3 days because their back offices were not functioning we have them as a backup center here and we invite all the 14 large psus and the private insurance companies in a in a big financial domain we give them cloud backups we build them the cyclone resistance earthquake resistance facilities in visay you can have a f- alternative financial a uh, hub with about 50000 people working in visakhapatnam in the back office in the insurance domain in the banking domain also there's a lot of back office happening in other metros but not in visakhapatnam if you can also have a back office uh, domain for the banking sector and the insurance sector and automobile sector also we are not having much there are the growth engines of the economy if you can set up the ecosystem for this specialized areas going to blockchain cloud that is a separate issue even for these basic things we are able to request companies to come here uh, i think you will be having a beautiful ecosystem where you know you'll have more than lakh lakh and half people working out of visag with high specialized skills and that will give the further fill up for the people who are coming into the it sector next okay sir sir so regarding your uh, company symbiosis what are the service you offer here in this company sir initially we had uh, specialization in dot net java and we still are working but we have a small team in that so sorted and database this uh, we have us clients for that later on we moved into animation so we are now mostly into software testing engineering services as part we actually we have built the singapore police headquarters the dubai international airport were designed by our engineering team so we have a strong team in engineering software we have a team in software development a strong team in software testing in fact for google we supplied more than about uh, we helped them more than 100 people in google in software testing later on they wanted to have their own facility but so the outsourcing was not continued so once uh, we moved from uh, software testing and uh, development more into focus on animation like we have close to about 400 people in animation in 2d animation in 3d animation in vfx especially we have, i think we have worked on with i think about at least 30 40 companies globally on vfx and about at least 10 15 companies we have worked with uh, all the name, uh, big names in india like you can uh, think of disney india you have the sony india 
uh, anybody you, you name um, technical uh, you name any company in india we have worked with them and globally we have worked with companies in france companies in dubai companies in the us nasdaq listed companies we have seen all of them so the only thing is talent pool here is less compared to and people want to go to metros because they get paid more you know with multinational that is the only issue and the training infrastructure is not good in visa so once you have the and uh, in animation vfx i think we are the only company in, uh, the largest company in andhra pradesh so and i don't see any second level companies also there so it's difficult to attract talent to visa or to our company because most of them are working in hyderabad or bangalore where they are you know their fun atmosphere is little more uh, there for creative people that's a challenge that is why we are not able to attract uh, big companies globally to come and operate from visa because availability of talent is a big issue okay. if you want to hire uh, people in vfx or uh, special effects or high end movie that talent pool doesn't exist in this area absolutely and there is no training infrastructure also we have to get them from bangalore or you know calcutta or chennai or we have to outsource it globally in india so that is a challenge that is why we are not able to grow to the extent we can grow and we are not able to convince clients to give us much high end work so we are happening to do with medium or low end works so once uh, we are successful in attracting talent to shakpat maybe if one or two good companies come and their talent pool feels that is a beautiful place then i think we can move to the next level so there is a lot of buzz is happening on animation domain that simbio is doing a, a full fledged movie can you tell about the movie details sir i think uh, i think we are one of the few companies in india who have done an animation uh, film we have done an animation film called salma's big wish that was uh, i think a low budget movie i think it was budget was around 2 million dollars for that and we have done half of that movie because that movie is then already half by the time i went in they wanted us to help in the post production so i think they gave us a million dollars to do that so that was one yeah, that was the movie initiative and uh, now we are doing another movie called the nova sarka that is a big budget and not very big budget but in about 6 million dollars about 45 crores for an animation film but not many companies in india spend up 45 crores on a 90 minute film in animation this is about the nova sarka where we have lot of sea and storm and boats going in and lot of special effects work and all that is being produced and animated out of shape and a little help from our office in hyderabad and calcutta so the other unique feature of this film is brazilian and the us joint venture and the us partner is a very big distributor he's already produced 50 films okay. in the space and uh, he has already pre sold he's got uh, commitments from 20 distributors across the globe who want to buy this film once it's complete so it's not like it's we're just producing it like there is there's a nice story it's we already have commitments from 20 people that they will buy this movie a similar movie that was done earlier had revenues in excess of 20 million dollars that's about close to 150 crores once it's completed so we expect this movie to do very well we expect a revenue of between 10 to 20 million dollars once it's released mostly on the television and the global ott networks if we are not not much from the theatrical revenue even that also will count overall global revenue we expect between 15 to 20 million dollars okay. so that is the and the initiative we have taken here is we wanted to be a very environmentally responsible company so we have uh, set up a 200 kilowatt solar power plant here and the entire energy that's being consumed for this movie is going to be met by solar energy okay. so we can proudly say that from vishakhapatnam in andhra pradesh we are producing one of the good level animation because in animation people like disney produce movies in 100 million dollars 200 million dollars so 5 to 6 million is a very small budget yes. but from an andhra pradesh perspective of spending 50 crores on animation is high in the global perspective they spend about 1000 crores 2000 crores on animation film so we are not yet there so we are but globally i think i i'm i'm pretty sure that we might be the only company in the world who has produced an animation film Uh, completely on green energy that would be a, a a great achievement i think personally and in an environment where it's, it's an oxygen rich environment at is great to be uh, breathe in pure air which we can discuss later yeah so the animation film is scheduled to be completed next year it is a brazilian and a us uh, co producer two we have two co producers one in brazil who gives us the pre production the us does the music and the voices and they also distribute the film we do the animation and the post production for the animation part the voices and the music are done in the us sir we heard that uh, symbiosis technology is a green building and lot of oxygenated plants are uh, kept in the campus so can you tell about uh, more about those plants and how this is uh, ecosystem is helping the employees or the company uh, yeah i think this is an initiative which every company i think should take you know you have been hearing stories about the pollution in wise like the port pollution in wise like the pollution from public sector undertakings especially in whatever in whatever area you think the the, on the coal dust or the Importing hazardous chemicals. No, so th- there are various issues at pole, 
this and one of a couple of my employees also left for Hyderabad because uh, they had they were allergic to some pollution. So that's when we thought we'll do, do something, and we came across a TED talk. One of my friends showed me a TED talk. Kamal, one person called Kamal, set up the greenest building in India with the highest amount of oxygen in the residential in a commercial space in Delhi. So I went through that, and then they suggested some three plants. One of them was a money plant, and there were two other plants like Arkere Palm. So they they produce the, the highest amount of oxygen for employees to you know breathe in fresh air, oxygenated air. Then I wanted to dig deeper and you know to see what else uh, we can do. Then what does our ancient uh, Indian system say? What do the modern scientists say? What do the technologists living in Delhi say? I found three areas. The old uh, ancient India relies on neem trees which they purify the air and the tulsi trees, uh, tulsi plants which purify the air and there are a couple of trees. So we made sure in the outer of the building we had a lot of neem trees and people trees and inside the campus we had a lot of tulsi trees to purify the air. That's on the one perimeter one. And the perimeter two what we thought was in the at the reception area, in the entrance areas, in the corridors, in the staircases. We researched about the top 10 air purifying plants by NASA. You can just go into Google, search top 10 air purifying plants by NASA. You get a list of 10 plants, top 10 air purifying plants. We bought all those 10 plants in hundreds and thousands. We put them in all strategic places, right from the time you park your car to the time you go up to your workplace. It's on the staircase, in the entrance reception lobby, floor around your uh, ex exit and entrance doors. See, every area we made sure we had these plants here, that is a level two. In the level three, inside the workspace, where you actually work in the air conditioned space, also we made sure all these plants are there on all sides of your uh, working environment. The idea is to have the maximum amount of oxygen in this area. These plants suck out all the toxins from the system, like uh, from your computers, from the carpet, from the wood paneling. There's, there are dangerous chemicals that are released from various uh, synthetic surfaces like formaldehyde, benzene. So all these pollutants are removed by the specific plants which NASA has said. So we have about, I think we have about 400 people working in our campus and about more than 10,000 plants in our office in the, the three levels I have spoken about. And um, you, I would request uh, any of your people to come and visit the campus and see for themselves. Uh, maybe it will be an exaggeration, but I think uh, in India we may be in the only one or two or three buildings who have the highest number of oxygen rich air purifying plants inside a campus. The ratio of plants to the person also is very high, more than 10,000 plants for you know 400 employees, is almost 25 plants for every single employee that's working inside a two acre campus. That is in addition to the other plants that have been planted uh, in the one acre outside. I think it would be a pride for Vishakhapatnam or Andhra Pradesh to know that uh, the significant amount of oxygen is being generated from our premises. We have the highest amount of air purification plants inside our campus. So what do these plants do? You can go to this IIT study and I can give you a copy of the link. I think you can also share the copy of the link. They reduce your eye strain when you look at the computers by about 20%. They reduce the incidence of headache by 20%. They reduce your fatigue factor by 20%. The productivity of the employees actually goes up to 20% because the lung Oxygen absorbing capacity of the lungs increases actually when you sit for 8 to 10 hours in a campus which is oxygen rich and air purifying. In addition to that, energy requirements also keeps coming down because you know, that's what's been proved in scientific studies uh, that the consumption of power also goes down because of the large number of plants which reduce the heat and increase the uh, oxygen levels in the uh, both internally and externally. So that is one plus. So multiple factors like say, your lung capacity improves, your uh, eye strain reduces, your headaches reduce, your fatigue reduces, your productivity is increased. So these are the positives of this plant and uh, I would definitely be happy to take anybody who is interested in seeing the plants or wanting to note down to come and visit our facility in Rishkonda, hill number 2 and plot number 1 and 2 to personally see for yourself the amount of work we have done on taking information from NASA, taking information from the Vedic texts like planting even the Saraswati leaf, you know, to improve your memory and intelligence. And uh, this NASA, this uh, Delhi IIT study on having a very green building, purifying your air for a commercial building in Delhi. So we have taken various steps and implemented them in Vizag. And definitely this could be the greenest building, not only in Vizag and Andhra Pradesh, but also in this country. I would challenge anybody to show me a, pl a building that has more number of green plants and in tune with the green energy, I think 50% of our energy needs 
uh, which we consume power are made from solar power. We have set up a 200, we, we consume about 400 kilowatts of power and 200 kilowatts are solar in the first place and we plan to make it also soon, the balance 200 kilowatts also into solar power. So on both the fronts, we have water recycling, we have food recycling and um, on all parameters, I think, um, I'm sure I, there's no other company and you know, it'll sound like bursting, but I would challenge anybody else to show me a building. It's difficult to even maintain, you know, so many plants which are, some of them are very sensitive. Uh, and buying and planting plants is easy, but we've been doing this from the last seven years, I think. This initiative that's been taken five, six years back, um, started seven years back, I aggressively pursued in the last five, six years. So we're maintaining all this from the last six, seven years, this green air purifying initiative, oxygen bombs, this, they're called oxygen bombs. So um, I think not many people are aware, I think every school, I think would love to have the children come and see uh, how oxygen rich environment looks like and how peaceful the air around here looks like. Naturally, it's a beautiful area on a hilltop facing the sea. The pollution is less in this part of the city. But having this is definitely, you know, something which everybody in the city should come and watch and take pride. Because everybody does business, everybody makes money, everybody does a living. But you know what you do, uh, what makes a difference, what gives you a pride for your employees, for your city, for your state and for the nation. And when you talk to global customers and tell them that, you know, you're such an environmentally responsible company where uh, you have your energy is produced from solar power and uh, the air around you is oxygen rich and you take care of um, not only the workplace but surrounding workplace and outside your office also. The entire approach road also we make sure is filled with uh, green plants. I think we have done our bit for this city. Okay, sir. Sir, from animation, now you you have a exclusive studio with state of art facilities and everything. So what is uh, all about the studio and what, what can a common man or any artist can do in the studio? See, as part of the movie, we had to develop a, a film lab here. See, we had to have a recording studio. You know, we are also working with uh, Aditya Birla Entertainment. We have worked with many leading Indian companies. And so we had a problem in COVID where, you know, we have, we couldn't get work done with, initially we were into animation. We, we had outsourced work for music and voices to other studios. We didn't have a recording studio. No? So we set up a re-recording studio, a dubbing studio in our own premises, state of that. I think one of the best recording studios in South India. I don't think if you go to Chennai and Hyderabad also you'll face, uh, you'll see a better uh, recording studio, dubbing theater. Then we set up an exclusive VFX lab. You can st uh, shoot live shoots in VFX. With, the room is entirely VFX with modern lighting, with the, one of the best cameras. Uh, and then we had a, if commercial ad filmmakers or, you know, uh, short filmmakers want, you know, to, for their artists to change. We have a very large, I think close to 2,000 square feet or 1,500 square feet of makeup room, which is one of the largest makeup rooms, plus changing facility for, you know, so people are very comfortable. You know, high-end movie star comes, they'll be very comfortable using the makeup and just addition to the VFX lab and to the dubbing theatres. And then we have built a preview theatre. We have a edit lab where you, know, you can edit the movie, uh, you can do the DI, you can do the post-production, can preview the scenes, you can do the color correction there on the spot, on the fly. So we have created all the basic stuff required because we already have this one lakh square feet building, so I don't need to build anything extra. Within the existing, existing building, we just need to have partitions and put the equipments and the systems in place. So I think in Andhra Pradesh, if you talk, if there's a functional studio ready to use for any shooting uh, or recording or VFX work or preview, to get that thing, I think, I don't think you will have a better facility than us. Maybe there are other studios in large size where they have sets. But if you just come for the core work of dubbing, re-recording, previewing, DI, color correction, VFX, shoots, I th for any short film or for any ad film or even for a regular film, you can get your entire, you know, the producer and the hero can sit and do the dubbing and the entire uh, edit and DI in Vishakhapattam in a world-class facility on a hill facing the sea. I don't think a, a more conducive environment in an oxygen-rich environment, we know. And the entire studio, like I said, is also the connection is from the green energy. This could be one of the film labs entirely run on solar power. Uh, the green energy, that's the big motivation. And uh, so the on the positive side, you have a studio that runs on solar power and uh, you are working in an oxygen-rich environment. And it's a brand new setup, uh, which is as good as any studio you have seen uh, in South India. Uh, we heard a lot of things about the company and everything, sir. 
So what are the future plans for the next 10 years? Of we'll take one thing at a time. See, once we finish this movie, see, this is a small setup we have started to initially to anchor because Vaisak doesn't have a film environment or IT environment yet to take off. In both areas, we have taken the lead because the state government also wants to push Vishayapatnam from the last 10, 15 years as IT destination, as a tourist destination, as a film destination. The last three chief ministers wanted to do that, but they couldn't achieve to the extent. So the state government is very keen. We have the government's initiative and priorities to develop Vishakhapatnam both as an IT and a film destination. Luckily, we have both the infrastructures in place. We have an IT ecosystem in place, we have the film ecosystem in place and even if young budding artists like Sebo, somebody wants to record a music album, they can definitely, we will encourage people, we, I can subsidize the cost, we can co-produce along with them. Anybody wants to do a music album, they want to do a voice album or even a video album with VFX and then change the graphics around it and they want to produce short films, they want to do ad films, they had to go to Bangalore earlier or you know, had to even do to photo shoot uh, for ad films and all that can be done now in Vaisai. So we are the first company in Andhra Pradesh with the largest presence in animation, with the largest presence in VFX and special effects and a cute working studio. There is companies with 30 acres, 40 acres in film but we are in a very small space. But I think in terms of working environment, I think it will be one of the best working environment uh, for people to come and you know do any of the things that I have described for post production or production inside the facility. So once we finish our movie, this uh, animation movie that's finished uh, and we are able to attract more talent, once the news spreads that we have finished this, which we will be finishing next year, this is about close to 6 million. We already are in talks with a France based company where they want to give us movies in the 20 million to 40 million dollar budget. So they said once you finish, earlier you were doing films at 1 to 2 million dollars, now you have moved up to 6 million. We want to look at the quality of the movie you have done in 6 million and then give you the 20 to 40 million dollars. 40 million dollars is like it's like close to about 250 crores or the 300 crores, 300 crores. So that's the that's that's the next level which we are looking at. And after that, maybe with this, that's, we'll take one at a time. We are, we are not in a hurry because each of these requires about 100 to 200 people working for a year, year and a half, each movie. So the next thing is uh, one of the people we are already working on. We are working on a TV series with them, a France-based company. For the last three years, we are doing continuous. With they pay us about about um, two two million dollars per year on TV series. They we produce Robin Hood. We have another series called The Lady Bug. So we are working with them. So they are also doing a lot of movies, but they are in the very high end film space and they want to be, they want to assess us, finish, see the quality of this movie. And then maybe we will move into the 20 to 40 million dollar range. Initially, maybe the 20 and the 40 million, maybe do one or two movies after this movie is done by mid next year. And then move into the trade and see the ecosystem in place. There's a lot of work. Artists should be there. And the confidence that comes from the revenue receipts from this movie will set the ball rolling. We'll take it one step at a time. Pandemic has changed so many things. Yes. We are comfortable. We have our own facility here. And uh, we have set up the ecosystem. What, what all we can do initially, we have done. Maybe we have not grown as much as we wanted to. But we are not in a hurry. We have selected niche spots. And uh, like I said, we'll move from the 50 crore budget to the 300 crore budget. And then maybe later on to a higher budget movie. So there is a lot of young talent from Vishakhapatnam who are migrating to other cities, major cities and everything. So what is the message you want to uh, tell about the, your city and uh, the career in animation? There are a lot of potential in animation, VFX in Vishakhapatnam, definitely. Uh, most of the people have the passion, but are they investing in the right kind of technologies or right kind of finishing schools? I would suggest them to go and uh, there's not much of a high quality training set up in Vishakhapatnam. So I would definitely recommend them to go to one of the finishing schools in animations that are there in Mumbai or Bangalore uh, or in Hyderabad initially to train. Later on we can also help set up somebody if somebody wants to set up and there will be a future in VFX and animation. Yeah, not only in animation, in any other industry, if you talk about software testing or software development or engineering services, what we are working on, if people are willing to work hard and dedicate, you know, people who are looking for easy money, they are not in interested in working so hard initially. They are used to this, you know, partying and uh, enjoying life. Uh, so pe we companies are not looking for people like that. People are, pe we want dedicated people. We want dedicated people, hardworking people, people who work as if their life depends on it. They are not doing it for, you know, just for the sake of doing it. And animation is a different field, it's a creative field where people do it out of passion. They don't do it for money, they do it because they enjoy it. So that is slightly different from regular um, software work. There is a higher goal. If you look at it as a nation, we are doing a service to the country by bringing in foreign exchange. We are creating employment and also making them work in a beautiful environment without consuming national resources. 
the biggest consumption is only electricity right in it yes. other than computer we don't consume if that also we are producing from the sun we are not using anything except the food of this nation um, but uh, getting foreign exchange from various countries across the globe if the individual believes i as an individual cannot do it if everybody believes that they are doing national service not only by joining the army or the navy or a defense but also uh, working for an export oriented company in the field of their passion and choice they are contributing to the growth of the country the country is getting foreign exchange the country economy of the country is becoming strong they are employed uh, they are able to transfer their skills to other employees and they have a sense of discipline and for every employment direct job there is an indirect two three indirect jobs when they go for housing or laundry or for beautification whatever there are about three four indirect jobs created so every person that works directly in an it company supports three to four people in indirect so if they understand the higher purpose how the nation grows how the parents are proud how they create an ecosystem for other people to follow i think that is the bigger spirit and eventually the money will flow if you have the passion and if you have the discipline the two things are missing one you should not do it for the money you should do it for the passion and then you should have the discipline and little bit of hard work somewhere down the line in recent times a little bit drop in the passion little bit drop in the hard work little bit drop in the commitment for few people are there. if you can pick up on the commitment part you stay your course definitely you will get your money one day maybe it will take you will be delayed by year but you will get whatever your more than your worth once you stick to your plan and execute as per the age old formula of dedication discipline and determination uh, nazir thank you so much for giving all the insights of the animation and uh, about your company i wish lot of success uh, in coming years for the uh, symbiosis and you too sir thank, thank you, you. thank you